you're someone that has already been engaged in some kind of activities in your own country, for example, if you're working in your own country at this period of time and you don't intend to leave your country to further study, but at the same time, you want to have a master's degree, this scholarship is specifically for you because it's a common way to distance learning master's scholarship, which means that you get to stay at the comfort of your home while you take your master's program online versus distance learning. So if you don't intend to go to the United Kingdom to study, you are comfortable at your home country at this moment because of one or two things that you are engaged in, but at the same time you want to have a master's scholarship then you can apply to this scholarship. So it's a fully funded scholarship that covers your tuitions in the university of your choosing in the United Kingdom while staying at your home country to study. Then, how do you apply to the scholarship? The closing date is March 28, 2023. Today is March 1st, so it's closing in 28 days. And the application process, basically, everything is stated here. These are the documents that you need, your international passport, your transcript, your reference. So in this case, like before, in reference letter, before you have to input an email, on the application portal then an email will be sent to the to your reference for them to fill out the reference form on your behalf but in this case for this this is the first time that they are changing it in the case you have you will be the one to upload the reference letter into the portal into the common way distance learning portal by yourself so all you just have to do is collect your reference letter from your recommenders then but well, you make sure that the reference letter are on a letter edit paper of that recommender in the university. So you collect the recommend the recommendation letter from the recommenders on a letter edit paper of the university of that recommenders. So after you've done that you scan it then you upload it to this portal by yourself. Before the reference the recommenders will upload it on your behalf but now you get to upload it by yourself. So these are those are the that's the basic changes that they've made to their application process. Then selecting the university that you want to study. So based on the course that you want to go for, these are the teams of Commonwealth scholarship. They use the same for all of their scholarship. The normal Commonwealth share scholarship, Commonwealth master scholarship, they use this same for their scholarship. So when you come here, you check the team where your own program falls under. It falls under the access, inclusion, and opportunity tracking economy is basically for education. Promoting global prosperity, these are the three programs that they have. Science and technology for development, these are the programs that they have. Strengthening global peace, security, and governance. Strengthening aid system and capacity. These are a lot of programs because it's aid based. And then lastly, strengthening resilience and responses to crisis. So for this application, before I usually use science and technology, anything related to science, like biology, as my sample. But today I'm using health system, I'm using public health as my example. I realize that a lot of people go from public health, and here they have like this second one, this third one. They have like three programs in three different universities for public health. There was one public health in three different universities. So a lot of people go for the program, that's why I'm using it. It's like even now that as what I'm using it as the samples for my for all the essays that I get to because you're going to write a lot of essays when it comes to common with scholarships. So these are the items. You come here, you check the university that has your program. Once you've been able to check it, you go to the university page, you check their recommended their requirements for applying to the program. So this scholarship doesn't actually request for IETS or TOEFL. Now whether you need ISS or TOEFL that depends on your university, the requirement for that program. So you check the entry requirement for the program as an international student. For this program at this university, you need this. But if your country requirement is on their website, that means you don't need to have ISS or TOEFL. So basically, this is your entry requirement. The first thing you need to do is come to this page, check your program. Most of you don't find your program. Open it and check the entry requirement. If you have all the entry requirements, then you don't have to submit it. So for this one, you have the list of countries that doesn't have to submit it. If you are from any of your citizen and you study in any of these countries, that means you don't have to submit it. So you're qualified to have to be eligible for the 
So yeah, I'm saying so Sub-Saharan Africa, yeah. Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, so you're yeah, from many of these African countries, you are considered. Which means not if English is not the medium of your community of communication in your university, in your country, that means you have to write it. But if it is, then you may talk with the requirement of this. So it depends on the university. Some universities have the list of countries on their website. Why some other university doesn't even have? As long as you are not from UK, US, or Canada, they want you to write it. While a whole lot of other universities have their requirements if you are from a specific country like this, then you only need to provide an IAT as well to form. So once we've been able to identify your program of choice, then you start your application. You know that you are eligible if you are from any of this country. These are 44 countries, so you have to be from one of these 44 countries to be eligible for the scholarship. But mostly are just the Commonwealth countries. So we have to be from one of the Commonwealth countries to be eligible for the scholarship. Then selection process and everything. So to apply, to, to apply, you click on this page. It will take you to the application portal. I already have it open. I will show it to you. Then after you've done that, this is the list of participating universities in the UK. We have it here. So once you've been able to meet up with all the requirements, like I said, you go to the university, you choose your program, make sure you check the, check the entry requirements to see that, okay, you have all the requirements that is needed to submit an application to the program. So once you, you are sure that you have all the requirements, then you start your application. So at times you might have submitted an application before, you might have submitted an application to the university for your choice, to that program before you start your application to the distance learning scholarship. So if you have, you can start your application with this at the same time. If you haven't, you don't have any problems, you can just come here and then start your application. You don't necessarily have to have submitted an application before you submit the Commonwealth scholarship application. But if you have submitted an application and you've been given admission, you can just come to this place also. You input your number, they know that, okay, you've submitted an application. Once you submit the application to the university and you'll be given a conditional offer, the university will give you the university application and then you input it. But if you don't submit an application, you don't have any problem. You can just come here and start your application. You don't necessarily have to input the university application number. You can just come here and start your application. Because I've started the application, all the, all the back process, that is a normal process of inputting your details, your names and all that. So these are the important features. 5% you have to write your know, development impact essay. So they ask a series of questions here that you have to answer. And I have the samples here based on public health because I realize that on that Commonwealth school, there should be a lot of programs on that. There are a lot of universities that do the Commonwealth program. So I see it to be a German program to the scholarship. So that's why I've written an essay based on that program and I will leave the link to the essay in the description below after publishing the video. So here you come here, you choose the CS, see the Commonwealth Scholarship team that your program falls on on the for the public health it falls on the strictly strictly health systems. When you come here, yeah, strictly health system so the public health falls on the it. So after you've chosen it you choose some categories of sustainable development goals that I think are so for public health, obviously, good health and well being. Secondly, you can choose zero hunger. Then, the third one can be clean water and sanitation. It can be what other one? Sustainable cities and communities. So, all those are related to public health. Then, your essay now, the first one it has to be 200 words. And then you have to answer it based on this question that is asked here. Are your proposed story relates to the team, the development issues, development issues related to the team, the wireless sector? So here is an example. You can always come here and check it to have an idea of how to write your own sample as well, how to write your own essay as well. So for this training, I wrote everything here. And the second one, development in part two. How you intend to apply your new skills and qualification once your course ends? So yeah, I wrote up. You can 
or I want to apply a skill after completing a public health course, I intend to apply my new skills and qualification in several weeks. First and foremost, I hope to work in public health field, health related fields such as labor agents. Then it's all done. What you expect to change in development terms following your studies. So the outcome, the time frame, and the beneficiaries. So I do it in those categories also. This is the outcome to contribute to the evidence based policy. This is the time frame. So I categorize it in short term and long term changes. I can record this short term and long term. In short term, I expect to contribute to the design and implementation. In long term, contribute to broader changes in health system. Then the beneficiaries, so for the beneficiaries are the poor health outcomes facing the poor people facing health barriers and all that. So those are the beneficiaries. Then the last one on this page is how the impact of your work will be measured. That is everything that for that. So you make sure that I mean, I really want it to be more than 200 words because I'm not submitting it. So I will sit long for you so I have a general idea, a better idea of how to write your essay as well. Then the second one for, for us to go, we have to write something here. Then the second one, objectives during the hour. So you describe the skills that you expect to gain from this scholarship and your career plans. What you return on after work? So these are the career plans. So as I was speaking on scholarship and public aid, these are the skills that I intend to give. So I listed the skill analytical skill, program planning, leadership and management, um, cultural competence. So from here, I make sure that these skills that I'm able to gain, I apply it in the future because it will ask you your long-term goals, your short-term goals, your goals in five years. So for this one, I identify the objective of the study. So once you've been able to identify the objective of the study, you'll be able to say from the objective of this study, from what you've gained from this study, you're able to implement it in five years, you're able to implement it in 10 years, which are your long-term goals. So for this for five years plan after the award, these are the skills that I've been able to gain, leadership and management, program planning and evaluation and analysis skills. So I'm able to bring it down to five years, okay. The leadership and management skills that I gained from here, I'm able to implement it here to use leadership development. So I plan to participate in leadership development programs and so advocacy and public policy. Advocacy and policy development and that. So furthermore, your long-term career plans. Your long-term career plans, I was able to use it also. Leadership and management rules. I aspire to take on leadership and management rules in public So there is a continuous application of what I've said. In the normal objectives, I'm able to say, that, okay, I, will. I plan to have the leadership and management skills. Then in five years, I will use the leadership development. Then in 10 years or longer, the leadership and management rules that I've given, I'll use it to take roles in public health organizations and further build myself. So you make sure you correlate together from your objectives to your short term to your long term career plans. Then lastly, there is a personal statement page and the voluntary experience. I've written everything here too. These are the personal things made and the voluntary experience. So you could be able to use this essay as a guide for you to write your own as well and submit your application. So there is development in fact, there is career plan that personal statements. Once you are done, you'll be able to submit your application. Thank you so much for watching the video.